you're new to the channel, my name is Lada, but if you're not, welcome back. I know we've been away for a while and I'm really glad that we're being able to record new content and actually be able to provide more of our experiences in this past year that we weren't able to record before. I know it's been a while, but I'm really excited to go over my uh, supplemental essays, especially since the last time I read them was a year ago and because after my first year at college, I really feel like I learned from other people who I met there and how they wrote some of their essays and also like what worked for other people in general. And so I'm really glad I'm be able to revisit all of this and provide a clear view of how I have learned a good way to write supplemental essays. Now, obviously I'm only going to be showing you supplemental essays of the universities I got into and the experiences I've learned are only from the university I am currently attending, but I have really been trying to understand how admissions officers do receive uh, our essays as uh, it is a essential part of the college application nowadays. I even would go as far to say that it is the most important depending on the universities you apply to. I think for the ones I applied to, it was balanced between my essays for those that were more um, academic based and those for who were more artistic were kind of essays but generally the portfolios. I don't want to waste any more time uh, so I'm just going to dive right in. The first school that I'm going to be talking about is a school that I attend, so Barnard College of Columbia University and for the supplemental essays you just have to answer uh, three questions that are 300 words long. I know the third one is optional but my first piece of advice is any optional essays, do them. Do them because it will help you in every single way. Not only will admissions officers hear more about you, be able to see more of your personality, see your interests, they just like when you put in more effort. I think it, it's kind of obvious, but I know that a lot of people are overwhelmed by essays. There's so many to write. And also, it is kind of daunting when they're like, oh, if it's optional, like, do I really have to do it? Like, I already wrote so much do it. <laughs> and that's my only advice because I think that it is so helpful for them to also see you as a person and recognize you and be more excited about admitting you because they want to know more about you. Like they're genuinely interested about that. So the first question I have here is what factors encourage your decision to apply to Barnard College and why do you think the college would be a good match for you? So this I think is a classic like why essay. So if you don't know why essay is basically like why do you want to go to the university? And I have some straightforward tips for this one because there's not much that you can do besides be honest because I think they can see through you really easily if they're just like, oh, you wanna go because there's trees and like nature, like that could be it, but you're really gonna have to like sell yourself, give good arguments and tell them exactly why you actually wanna go. Another one is be unique. I think that although there is a limited amount of things that you can talk about, about why you wanna go to the university, I think applying it to your life and applying it to your personality is a helpful reminder of to them why you're applying in the first place. And I know it's kind of intuitive, like why I say why you apply, but there's a lot of applications where you're like, oh, this is a safety school or this is a school that I just feel like I need to apply to. And uh, admissions officers know that happens. So I feel like they need that extra reassurance. Like, do you know what our institution is, have you done your research, which will lead to um, our third uh, tip, which is um, to appealing to the school's values. So showing that you belong there while also showing how it uh, appeals to you, how you are a unique person who will fit in their environment. For this third point, I highly recommend doing research. You need to know the university. I recommend watching every single YouTube video, that's what I did. I recommend uh, already like researching all of the, the websites. Do everything you can 
because you will find those niche little traditions or those little activities or clubs that you want to join and might be unique to the university which could be a justification as why you would fit in there are so many reasons why just doing your research and just like dedicating yourself to knowing more about the school will help you because I know for me at least and for other people who I would do research with and we would like talk about universities um, we kept falling more in love with the university the more we researched them so we wouldn't just stop there and think okay like this just looks like a cool place guess i'll go no <laughs> we found out there's these cool clubs or these cool um amenities that they offer and wanted to go even more and i think that shows when you're writing the essay so definitely do research first and then write the second uh, Barnard College question is, at Barnard, academic inquiry starts with bold questions. What are some of the bold questions you have pondered that get you excited and why do they interest you? Tell us how you would explore these questions at Barnard. So this question, I would basically say it's like interesting topics, what you're interested in, and definitely academic related. I think one of the smartest ways to approach this is talking about a potential career path, your potential major, or if you're decided, but in, for the US you can change either way. So even though you can apply saying like, you know your major, it is always taken as a suggestion, I think, but I can talk more about that for Barnard. I also think it's a great opportunity to show diverse interests. So although you can be very interested in chemistry, your biology, and want to major in those subjects, you can also start talking about art or philosophy and these other topics that may not be linked to your future path but still interest you and you might even study a bit, maybe minor, and they just show more about you and your interests without explicitly saying I'm going to be that major or that is what I'm going to do. It just shows more about you. My second piece of advice is take the question literally when they say bold questions. Be bold. I think the biggest fear with these supplemental essays is trying to figure out what admissions officers want to read, what they want to like hear about. And I know that this essay might be a little daunting because it's like, I can talk about anything and do they want to hear about anything? And most likely, like I think that any topic, especially something that you're passionate about, is very appealing to read. I love reading essays that I can see that someone's really interested in a topic, even if I have no idea what it is. I love listening to people who talk about their majors and I could never understand. And I feel like you can really see that, although it's hard to see it for yourself, I think the most important part is not getting caught up on what they want and just express yourself. Just say what you want to do and just keep to the topics that you find extremely interesting and relevant to you. So the third and optional essay for Barnard is pick one woman, a historical figure, fictitious character, or modern individual to converse with for an hour and explain your choice. Why does this person intrigue you? What would you talk about? What questions would you ask them? So I think an interesting approach, which is the one that I took, was um, thinking about someone who could potentially relate to you, whether through diversity, background, topic, anything with how you can relate to that person and how you would want to learn from that person. What would you, what do you think that they could teach you that would benefit you. Another tip is be creative with this one. I think because they make it optional, people do leave it last, or I know I did, uh, or do leave it a, a, a little aside compared to the other ones. But I feel like this one is, is a nice one to just be creative with how you want to express this interview, whether you want to do it like an interview style or you want to write it in a different way. I feel like this one is, um, like the best essay to get creative. I also think that this essay is a great one if you want to relate to your uh, intended major or potential career path because you can talk about someone which 
inspires you for that future that you are planning to have or just in general they are related to that topic and you can talk to them about it like i think it's a, an easy way to show another to another topic that you're interested in and it relates to you in some way i know for me in the last two essays i ended up talking about art uh, and i was applying as an art history major so it totally made sense for me to keep art in both of them because I knew that that was like the focus I wanted to show. But if you uh, know that you're going to double major or you know that you are undecided, you can totally split that up in these two essays and do a certain topic uh, for the second essay. And then for the third essay, keep another topic that relates to that figure that you want to um, interview. So I also got into Boston University and the question uh, that they gave me for my uh, application year was what about being a student at Boston University most excited to and this was 250 words so it's very similar to the Barnard essay I think I'd give the exact same advice um, just research uh, know what you want to talk about and I think I would just be more careful with the word count and try and synthesize things a little better because 250 words is like nothing so the next university is Fordham and the first question is, at Fordham, we expect students to care for and engage with their communities. Please share a specific instance in which you challenged yourself or stepped out of your comfort zone in order to impact your community. For example, your family, friend group, high school, or town. Or share a way you hope to do so at Fordham. So I feel like this essay is quite unique, but it's also kind of like a small personal statement if you do talk about um, an extracurricular or something that you've done in high school that affected other people, which I feel like is a quite common essay. Um, the thing is that it's 150 words, which was extremely challenging. Um, but I really think that a good way to look at this is trying to elaborate on an activity that you did put on the Common App, because I feel like it gives you an opportunity to talk more about something that you do mention in passing, but you don't really talk about the effects it had or the magnitude of it because it it's just listing it and not really explaining the impact it had on you or other people. Also, I'm not really sure if Fordham is one of those universities, but I know that some don't let you upload a CV. And if you don't have things on your activities list on the Common App, and want to add an extracurricular activity, this is a perfect place to add it because you're already talking about something new that is not in your activities list and I'm not sure if you would even have those there because I'm not sure if you upload the CV to this one. So take advantage of that. Talk about something new, but make sure to elaborate as much as possible. I know 150 words is quite impossible, but I think that it's the best way to go. I will say that I would prioritize putting the activity that resonates most with you but also that you think is the most impressive to people because although something that was smaller may um, seem more in tune with what you're majoring, I think something more impressive will catch the eye of admissions officers. So whether it's something that you were able to raise money for or something that helped more people than another activity, I think you should prioritize that because I feel like there's value in numbers and values in the statistics that you give. I think it is uh, a better measure of how much you impacted other people as well, not only how important it was to you. So the final school that I'm talking about is Georgetown University. And the first question is, Please indicate any special talents or skills you possess. You should write in either paragraph or bulleted list format. So I wrote this in paragraph format. I think it's just more personal that way. I feel like a bullet point list, although I, I think I tried in the beginning because I was like, oh, this is going to be easy. I think that it's nicer to read a paragraph where you're talking about it as well. I know that this might range for like admissions officers probably, or it doesn't matter to them because they gave you the option. But I know personally, I liked writing it out because it did help me like add thought to those skills and talents and what I wanted to show off to them and not only say, I can do this. 
Also, it is 250 words, which for a list, I feel like is a lot. So I think I wasn't trying to like fill up space, but I also think that it was more natural to write a paragraph for 250 words. You can try writing a bullet point list first, and then if you're like close to the word count, then keep it that way. But if you're missing a lot, then you can write it out and just make it part paragraph format. Second tip I'll give you is to show off. Just show off, like no, no hesitation. This one, they're just like, tell me everything you can do and like go for it. This can be like knowledge wise, so like academic, or it can be like skills, like you can draw, paint, you can write really fast. I don't know, you're ambidextrous. I don't even know if that's like a skill I would put, but <laughs> just like go for it. Again, this is an amazing essay to just link back to your intended major or potential career path. Amazing, because you can say, I have these skills, which I think would be helpful as an economics major. I think it would be helpful for a career in this like, a, like in, to go to medical school or law school, or I think that this would help me go there. And I know that's kind of daunting saying like, oh, I can do this. That means I'm ready for that. Because obviously you're still going through college and you're still, you're just, you still need that middle part to get to the future. But I think it does show um, your interests and how you're thinking about it. And although I wouldn't tell you to just be like, oh yeah, I can just start working now because I don't, I don't think that really makes sense. Like, why are you applying to college? But I feel like it is a good way to show that you're already thinking ahead and you're already preparing and that you're dedicated. Second question is briefly discuss the significance to you of the school or summer activity in which you have been most involved. This one is half a page, which I think is plenty of space. Um, and I think it's really similar to the Fordham one where you just talk about um, an activity where you have been most involved in, but also like I feel like you should talk about an activity that you think resonates more with you and also other people, like what are other people interested? If you tell them, oh, I did this that summer or I did that the other summer, what are people more inclined on hearing about? Because I think talking to others and seeing other people's opinions, it really helps getting an overall demographic of, oh, do people find this interesting? Or, oh, um, is this something that people would like to hear me talking about? In a general aspect, I think like when they're asking about something um, random, it is good. But when they ask what interests you specifically, I think totally just go for your interest. Totally just talk about whatever little teeny tiny topic makes you happy and just go ahead write about it okay this third essay from georgetown um is i think one of the hardest essays i wrote um and it goes as what does it mean to you to be educated how might georgetown college help you achieve this aim now this is like a complicated why essay because not only are you saying like why you want to go to Georgetown, why you want to get an education, it's like what does it mean to you to get an education? So I feel like there's an added layer over the Barnard one and the Boston University one because it's asking more of why do you want to go to college at all? One of the most important parts of this essay I think is that which is appealing to why you want an education why do you like to learn why is this going to help you why do you want to take this step in your life i feel like that is the most important part of it because if you can't answer that why are you applying to university it can even be because i just want that career and i want to learn these things and i want to be good at that and i want to be an expert in this field whatever reason you may have i really think that just being honest and being straightforward with i want to study this because of that is really helpful. The tricky part is if you're unsure about why you're applying to college, which is okay, because that can be your reason. Although you're unsure about what you wanna study, although you're unsure about what path you're gonna take in life, I think saying that, oh, I just want to explore, I want to 
find out what major I want to do. I want to learn a broad range of topics and funnel in on what my future will be. I need to go to an academic institution to be able to realize that maybe I'm interested in philosophy, never taken a philosophy class in my life. Or maybe I just want to experiment with this, but I need to go somewhere else to do that and I think that you can help me. That is a great essay. I think that that totally shows that you're doing your best, you're dedicating yourself, you're going through the next step, but you just don't know exactly what you're gonna do yet, and that's completely fine. I think that's the beauty of the American college system because you usually only decide your major later on. It's not something that you have to decide right away. And you can also take classes in a range of fields depending on how your curriculum is structured. And I think that's it's an amazing way of exploring your education because it allows you this flexibility that going into a specific course like in Europe or in other places in the world don't really allow you to do and so I think you should totally talk about that advantage that American universities give and also the specific university that you want to apply to gives. For um, the how will you do that in Georgetown part of the question I think you need to research. Research, research, research. I think if they ask you, how will you do that here? I think the Barnard one also said that, but it was m less explicit. I think you really need to talk about why that institution will help you. Regardless of what the reason is, you need to link it explicitly to certain aspects of the university that clearly will benefit you. I think an important reminder is that you should be doing this research inside and out of classrooms. So although classes can be very helpful in your education, so can clubs. So can things outside of those required parts, which are also extremely helpful and show that you're prepared to attend that institution. Also, I did mention this a bit, but I think it's important to talk about how this will help you beyond your education. So although you know that you want to get an education and you explain why, and you explain why you want to do it at Georgetown or whatever university, it's really important to understand because you're getting this education, how will it help you later? How will it help you in your life? Where do you want to go? after whether that's a clear or fuzzy picture so those were the specific uh, supplemental essays that i answered i know i just generally went over the questions but you can read my actual responses in the description i have linked the document and so you can um, watch this video and then go read um, my essays and they are very tailored to me so i do recommend like just listening to what i have to say and understanding like the structure or kind of how I approach these essays, but really go your own way. Like Try to do this in your own path with your own interests. And I think that those will produce you like the best essays you can. I will also be linking uh, a TED talk that I watched recently, which is specifically about trauma essays, which I know apply to college essays in general, but I thought it was very interesting. And I think it does show how uh, not only like how the specific type of essay is uh, viewed uh, for universities, but also like how the admissions process works because the speaker does talk about how like universities view certain essays and the dilemmas that this causes because there is sort of something that kind of works more but there also is like the ethical um and like moral issues behind it and i thought it was very interesting and i did go down a college essay rabbit hole after that so i'm only going to be linking that one um but yeah i totally recommend you check it out on that topic, I do want to give one last reminder to everyone is that these essays are extremely tricky and I know it is very hard um, to write them. I am so glad I'm done with them, but it was a very tricky experience and I do want to remind you that there is no right way of writing them. I know I mentioned that, oh, you can be more creative in this one, I think this one, that, but I think that the best way to approach these is the way that you feel is most right, the way you like reading them, the way that sounds most right to you, because then I think that you express yourself better to whoever is reading them. I think that there are very few ways of doing a right essay, but there are a few ways of doing a wrong essay, which could be like 
not personalizing it, making it very generic, and also making it very redundant. I think that essays which have been heard over and over again do become extremely redundant to admissions officers and that's why I emphasize being unique and also being personal because by being personal you will end up being unique. I am thinking of doing another video about why I chose Barnard and the research I did behind the universities and basically my whole process of figuring out why I wanted to apply to places, also how I was considering financial aid into this. I can make that video if you guys want because I think it is very helpful and a very daunting part of the admissions process which isn't really talked about enough. So yeah, uh, comment in down below if you want to hear more about that. Anyway, I had a lot of fun talking about these essays. I did not miss them, but I really hope they help you. And um, I'll see you soon in another video. Bye!